Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to day 25 of Inktober with <clears throat> Drawing with Michael. Today, um, I'm going to be doing uh, a beloved character, but I'm going to do it a little different style today. Um, I've been doing kind of quasi-realistic stuff. Um, when doing Harry Potter yesterday, of course, was the F Whooper, which I loved. He turned out really good. Today is going to be um, is going to be more of a, a stylized, cartoony. If that's even a word, cartoony um, rendition of Hagrid. <clears throat> so. If you guys know, Hagrid is the giant in the Harry Potter universe. And very beloved, kind of the overwatch keeper of Harry when he was a baby. And of course has a affinity with the mythical creatures. <clears throat> of the Harry Potter universe, which is pretty awesome. Um, so, this particular illustration uh, is going to be more stylized than the other ones because I'm trying to really do things a little bit different in my world and, you know, endeavor to expand and, and <clears throat> try different styles of course you guys know that you know I'm a really big proponent of that so that's what we're doing this pencil is too small so I've got an extender on this one which I'm going to use really quick Hagrid's got these very bushy eyebrows that come around. There's a gentleness here, but also I think there's, since he's so big, because he's a giant, <clears throat> there's definitely a sense of uh, power there. Um, if you guys know anything about the story of Hagrid, which I didn't, and I, and I still don't know all of it. You know, he was expelled from Hogwarts for doing something, um, if I remember correctly, doing something that was good and he was kind of framed in a, a bad light by the name that will not be mentioned. <laughs> Um, and he was subsequently expelled, and his his uh, his wand was broken. Of course, <clears throat> we all know that, or at least some of us know that are in that Harry Potter mindset. His wand was eventually formed into his umbrella. All these complexities of these characters. Sometimes it's hard. To remember everything um, if you're not you know into that Harry Potter universe which I'm not I don't say I don't want to say that I am not or if I am because I do so much work for the Harry Potter universe for Universal Studios um, and it behooves me to be up on the specifics and the nuances of the characters um, a lot of people don't really care, to be honest with you. They don't care about, you know, all the intricacies of the characters. But <clears throat> me being a character designer, me being an illustrator, me being a person that, you know, likes characterizations and design and stuff like that, it's always good for me to understand and know the different story and complexities behind these characters. So that's... One of the, I just know enough to get me in trouble. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, so Hagrid, he is 
one of my favorite characters, just because of the way they've designed him. I've seen different character designs of him on the internet, uh, and a lot of people, are, they're just so good. There's just so much really good stuff on the internet, and there's just really a lot of great, uh, you know, styles and the way people do things, and I just love, I love seeing how people treat these characters um, in general. <clears throat> Again, what I'm doing is basically stylizing this guy today in such a way that is fun, right? I want him to be fun. You know, I don't want him to be foreboding. So just the way that I've designed him, very round, right, very soft, you know, his beard is very soft, and his beard is huge. I recently did a, uh, a 3D project, I can't really explain what it is, um, but it is a 3D project for Universal Studios that involved this character. Um, and he was challenging, to say the least, but he was very fun, right? Just to be able to do stuff like that in your professional career, I think is something that, you know, we all aspire to do. You know, I remember, I remember growing up wanting to do stuff for Mickey Mouse. doing stuff for Mickey Mouse and I always I didn't know obviously I didn't know how that was gonna happen right cuz you know whenever you're young and you're impressionable and you're and you are looking at what you want to do as a career sometimes we just don't know the path to be able to do that and eventually I got the opportunity to draw Mickey Mouse for Disney which was, gosh, it was such a wonderful moment uh, in my career to be able to do something like that. And I actually got to um, draw Mickey Mouse and I combined different genres of Mickey Mouse. Because if any, any of you guys know about Mickey Mouse, he's there's different design genres that he comes from in the 20s, the 50s, you have the pie-eyed, you have the modern Mickey, you know, kind of the retro Mickey Mouse. So let me get his eyebrow right here. It's kind of coming right there. A big thing, he's got his cheek right there. And I'm gonna have his eyes kind of come around like this. And like that. And I've got this eyebrow kind of going up. Um, and I got the opportunity to design a really a, a new iteration of Mickey Mouse and that was just a delight. I had a really good time doing it. Just wonderful. Um, and whenever they stopped the freelance program, it was all gone. <laughs> You know, I still have, of course, they used all the artwork that I did, and it was just a great experience, and uh, I really enjoyed working at Disney, you know, for almost two years. And being in that environment, it changes you. Oops, dang, I broke my pencil again! Confounded! Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do a little detail here. Let me sharpen this. Sorry for that noise. It's always a noise that I dislike. One, two.
This comes here. It's rounded. Let's get these creases. Here's the part of his coat. Right? And here's his beard. Here's the umbrella that he's holding. He's got his finger here. He's got a finger here. And then this goes like this. This is his arm. And here's that part of the coat. Okay. Morning. Good. I'm doing a video. My daughter is waking up. There we go. Okay, I've got that strap that comes here and then it comes around. Crease. Okay, this goes here. Crease, crease. Have that shoulder come around. Okay. his eyes just that lid come down right so I get the eye structure established a little bit I bring this lid in here and I'll have a little bit of bags here nose comes out, in, and around. And again, I'm not rendering it per se with the uh, with the red line. I'm merely putting in here the goggles right there. And maybe they're going around his head like that. I'm merely putting an indication in because here in a minute, whenever I go to pin, I'll be marking over my red line. Okay. He's almost got a Santa Claus quality to him, doesn't he? So here, his little legs. Actually, he's got these really big boots, but I'm not going to do those because I don't really have the room. I made him a little bit too big. <clears throat> On my page. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going back and I'm just shoring up a couple of the areas that I feel I need to address, right? Maybe he's got a couple curls because he's got this really long, <clears throat> got this long hair. So I'm going to have this come down. He's got a couple locks come here and there, right? Okay. Maybe you see an indication of a pocket from his coat. Right, comes here. Okay, cute. Okay. He's got an arm patch. And the arm patch right here. Okay, define his goggles just a little bit more. I'm going to pretty much go back in here in a second with a pen and I'll define all of this stuff. I just want to make sure at least to have an indication in the pencil because a lot of times if you don't, you'll end up getting the wrong proportion, 
you know, and you won't be satisfied with your drawing. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. As a loose, let's get this beard out here. Make his beard a little more chaotic. I've turned my pencil over on its side because I want to have a little bit more variation of line weight, but I have to be really careful because I press hard because I want to have, you know, whenever I get in here, like right here, and I come under to the underside of this mustache, I want to give a little bit of indication of form. So I'm going to be pressing a little bit harder, but you got to be careful with these because they're not that durable in terms of, um, you know, pressing hard. Uh, you just got to be careful. Just know that. Know that whenever you press hard, you have a, a possibility of breaking your pencil, and I do that quite a bit. Um, so here, let me get that come up. I did a demo last night for my students in photography, because I'm a photography teacher at the college digital photography and I had a good time doing it it's always fun to get you know give knowledge to those who are interested in getting knowledge okay so we're gonna come back here let's see where the coat is coat comes here and it goes behind his beard you see the other part of the coat right here so here's the beard comes out. Let me get a little indication here, a little bit of shadowing. What I can do is I can just give just a little indication of his bottom lip. I don't want to give too much. We'll just give this right here. Right? And then I'll color that in be the top of his lip. Okay. And uh, you know, one of the things that I told the kids was basically in Photoshop, because it was a Photoshop tutorial about layer compositing uh, in Photoshop. You know, there's so many different ways of doing things in programs like that, but what's really cool, we're gonna give a little indication of shadow. What's really cool about Photoshop is it's kind of a primer, a primer program that really sets you up to be able to go into other programs, especially if it's an Adobe product, because a lot of the quick keys are the same. So I said, once you learn Photoshop, it really gives you kind of a heads up and a legs up to be able to do the other programs and not have too much of a problem and a learning curve because you've already learned all the quick keys in Photoshop. Plus, learning Photoshop is kind of an industry standard. Never have I had a company ask me, do you know how to use Photoshop? Because it's a given, right? It's not something that they're gonna say you know, as one of the requirements, or at least it, it hasn't happened to me. You know, it's like, you're an artist, you're in the art field, um, you should know Photoshop. And especially with today's, you know, the way the internet is, there's really no reason why, as an artist or illustrator, or even photographer, that you should not know, you know, a program like that. Now, granted, it's expensive, but they've got it set up where if you're a student or if you're, you know, a teacher or even, you know, a professional, you can do things to where the amount of money it costs every month is not a huge impact. Because back in the day, it was like $1,000 to own Photoshop. And then they would only support it for like two years, and then you'd have to go out and you'd have to get an update, and that update was like $275, you know, $300, and even then... It was just kind of ridiculous because you know I'm already I already bought the program and it just costs it costs a lot of money uh, to buy a program like that. So let's go ahead and do his legs. Simple feet. I'm not. I'm literally not looking to do those huge boots. Okay, so. He's looking pretty decent. So I'm going to go ahead to pin. I'm going to put you guys on time lapse for the pin just because um, it takes a little while to do. And I think we're what? We're 10 minutes in? Eh, 15 minutes in. 
So I'm gonna put you guys on time lapse, let you watch the process, um, and we'll do a wrap up uh, on the other side. Enjoy.
Okay, so that pretty much wraps up this piece for today. I put these little, like, stains on his coat because I figured, you know, after looking at some of the reference materials online, you know, his coat is one of those things that he wears a lot. So you're going to have stains, you're going to have maybe some dragon throw up or something like that, or maybe a broken egg or something like that to show whether... And again, all I basically did was put the red line down, come back with the ink. Then I used these alcohol-based markers. I have Copic. Gosh, I'm like a marker collector. I have Copic. I have Winsor & Newton. I have Prismacolor. Um, believe it or not, I got these from Michael. Not Michael's. I got these from um, uh, Ross, and I, pay, I think I paid $3 for them for the whole set. And they're made by Soho Studio, and they're fantastic. <laughs> you know, they're not going to replace my Copics by any means. They're made in China. They're artist lofts, which means they're probably from Michaels. Um, actually, no, this isn't. Okay, this is different than what I have on my hand. The artist loft I got from Michaels. This I got from Ross. And these are really good, too. But uh, that being said, I think this is pretty much going to wrap up what I wanted to accomplish with this piece today. Um, as always... Uh, please like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, trying to grow the channel a little bit. I think we're at 3,300 subscribers, which isn't too bad, not too shabby. Um, you know, obviously trying to grow a little bit more. I found out, I was looking at the, uh, the, um, you know, the amount of money that I had made last month from my channel. And, you know, just to give you insight, I think one of my videos had almost 9,000 or 10,000 views. And uh, I made uh, $5.60. <laughs> so that kind of gives you an understanding of how YouTube works, right? For every 10,000 uh, views that you get, possibly, you might make 5 or $6, depending on how you have your monetization set up. So some of those videos, so you can do the math. So if you see a video that has like 2.5 million views, so for every 10,000 uh, views, you might make 5 or 6 bucks. So, you know, those people that get millions of views, they're, they're making some decent coinage, you know. Um, that's why I can understand why people try and make YouTube uh, a living. Uh, because if you make, if you post a video every single day, and let's say you get, you know, 500,000 views for each video, you know, at the end of the month, you could have a decent amount of money. But, that being said, I'm not here to make money just to offset cost of making the video and eventually it'll happen I'm sure but right now I'm just interested in getting these videos out to you guys so you can enjoy the process so thank you guys for liking and subscribing um, share and we'll be making videos as much as I can um, and enjoy the process so I'm thinking about next uh, my next series of what I want to be doing if you have any suggestions please leave in the comments um, I have some ideas so I think it'd be really fun, uh, some of the ideas that I have, but I don't want to throw those out there and affect your idea process. So give me some ideas of what I should do as far as the next series go. Um, and I will be doing another review on Adobe Fresco, and I will be doing a review on the update to Procreate, and uh, whatever else uh, I can think of that makes sense on the channel. So thank you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.